it's time for the visit with the person of high strangeness. You know, our opening song was tired today, but that goes right along with, uh, <laughs> with us too, because today we are at the tail end of this trip that we call Najoni. To, remember, uh, to remind you, Najoni is a Navajo word meaning uh, beauty way, and that's when the medicine man takes you on a journey. So um, this is the last week in episode number seven of the Najoni and the journey we took. And like I said, the, uh, like our opening song, uh, we were kind of winding down and tried to make things a little easier for ourselves because by now seven weeks have passed. And um, today we're going to go to the uh, Lewis and Clark Trail. Uh, last week you was in Idaho. I'm sorry, last week you was in Utah. And then after Utah comes Idaho. And then instead of going on the freeway like we anticipated, we decided to stay on the back roads. And um, so we did not take 84 at all. And then, uh, of course, 82 goes back up into Washington. And we cut from, from 84 onto 82. And then Highway 14, which sort of takes you to um, Vancouver, Washington. And so you will see a lot of Oregon, but it is filmed from the Washington side across from the Columbia River. And so I guess as soon as we get queued up, we better get going. We got like, gee, we got about 800 miles to get home. And um, like I said, our last leg, and off we go. We want to go home now. So enjoy part number seven of Nazoni. Maybe not. There's another stop somewhere that uh, our car kept cutting out on us and it would sidetrack us and take us out of time. So it's the same with our clip here. It's taken us out of time. That's okay. Person of high strangeness. Uh, some of the shows are loaded in audio form on modernmystery.tv. And whenever we're ready, we'll crank that baby right up and go. And uh, give me a call and and stay in touch. Your sound sample of Here we are. We're on the way again. Enjoy. Wind in Idaho. I said, of course, it's a truck added to it. Blow the camera out of your hand, but this is normal for you. They have dust storms and they have signs saying, do not park, uh, do not stop on highway, on roadway. So I have no idea where you're supposed to stop. But this is what it sounds like. That's a normal day. Just this so you know. Mild. Mind. They have regular winds up to 80 miles an hour. Uh, we are not too far from Mulhern. That came through 16 miles of construction. So you're in a car, you're pretty okay. Vans are a little hard to drive in this weather. And of course, they, they are, the RVs, because the wind gets you right in the front there. And it like. It moves you over. These are lava beds uh, outside of Jerome. It's Idaho number 25 road. That's all sagebrush. Show you some up here. And uh, this is headed towards Jerome. We decided we were going to take a uh, side road to get around Twin Falls. I had a crap in my foot. Yeah, and, and Lillian didn't want to drive, drive on the highway. She wanted to get off and take a break because she had a cramp in her foot, a cramp in the back. You can see all the lava here. And uh, we found a, a uh, what the, 
I'm a mechanic. So we mind you, we had been trying to do that since Roswell, New Mexico. Get the generator fixed. And these, uh, these lava beds here, there's a pretty good, uh, pretty good lava bed feel. Oops, excuse me. Where 20, this road is just on the south end of the lava. This map, you can see where 25 is. We just got our generator fixed in Hazleton and then leaving going west we came across this sign here prehistoric man archaeological excavations show human occupation of the Snake River Plains for more than 10,000 years early men left weapons and other gear in a cave in a nearby butte bones show that they hunted game which is now extinct camels ancient horses and ground sloths in succeeding thousands of years, the climate grew extremely dry, much drier than it is today. Still later, it becomes less arid again. Through all these changes, man succeeded in adapting and remained here. Here's the other sign, Hunt City. Excluded from their west coast homes by military authorities, more than 9,000 Japanese Americans occupied Hunt Relocation Camp four miles north of here between 1942 and 1945. Until they could resettle in other places, they lived in wartime tar paper barracks in a dusty desert where they helped meet a local farm labor crisis, planting and harvesting crops. Finally, a 1945 Supreme Court decision held that United States citizens no longer could be confined that way, and their camp became Idaho's largest ghost town. Cool, so there's a ghost town around here. I'll well, over this that, way. that you sign was what it looks disturbing like. There's some to lava me. beds over there behind the sign. And unless we run out of time, I'd like to tell you a story that happened after the fact. I mean, after we, we saw that sign. Yeah, a few months later, actually. Pretty cool. So I'll, I'll get headed, back to that uh, sign later. West on, what was it? Three, three mile road towards Wendelin. No water shortage here. No. And Lillian's had a revelation. Well, not yeah, a little bit. Um, I think I, the energy, I don't care for Idaho energy at all, but here in the back, uh, away from the mainstream, it's, I can deal with that, it's finally, it's pretty okay. So, yeah, I finally made friends with Idaho, I think. I headed north on 201. Oregon. And off to the right is the Snake River. Looks like a moonscape back there. Pass to some moonscapes. Oh, okay. I guess it looked the same way twice. And it was hot in the 90s. After the initial snowfall... Back in the valley, there was a bunch of uh, farming operations. Now That's we're up in the hills. The initial weather, it was hot all the way, in, in up in the hundreds for weeks at the time. Then, of course, we came home and enjoyed the rest of the beautiful summer. passing me out of nowhere. A cow. A lot of wild animals out there. Again, make sure your tires are fine. You have gas. Because many miles, nothing. And nobody that can help you if you do break down. We have cell phones, sometimes they don't work. CVs are fine. Bunch of pots and dumpling. You can fix a lot of things with bunch of pots and dumpling. This is Highway 30 
from Pleasantville to Baker City. You can see the mountains of Oregon. not paying attention to the road. And look at that, the snow-capped mountains. It's so high, the snow just never melts up yeah, there. Yeah, something here, it's June. It's June. I came through there uh, in July. I don't normally say anything anyway, but especially now, I don't really have anything to say because uh, it's just so beautiful. Well, I came through there in July and it looked the same way. So. There's a big truck. For those of you that have never considered going cross country in an RV, that is uh, the, the best the way to travel. We're up at the top on Highway 14, actually. getting close to Dallas. You just can't drive 75. In there. Um, you can if you want to, but it's not advisable. Now we are on the Washington side. Across the river is Oregon. The gorge is so windy, so driving on the Washington side gets you out of most of the crosswinds, not all of them. But it's a lot easier to drive 14, and the speed limit is 60, so, um, and you get around Portland altogether, so uh, that's a, to me, is a smarter way to come back into, uh, Washington State area. A lot of weather comes off that river. Well, Washington is a pretty look. Yeah. yeah. Like Arizona, except the colors are changed again. And you're just sitting on volcanoes. So when we have emergency plans to go to higher grounds, coming through there, I thought. That's a joke. Yeah. Oh, it's not nearly as windy as river. You know, it's on the other side. I guess that's in Oregon. But yeah, you can throw us in Oregon. Again, like we're the both. other side of the we're river is the Oregon. Make sure you have your lights on. first rain we had encountered in quite a while, but being the great northwest, you have to expect yeah. that. Yeah. See, yeah, 13 feet, 9 inches, right there where that arrow points. I'm always a little leery when they're so narrow. And there's a scrape on line all the way through at that 13 feet, 9 inches. And on the right side, those are hatcheries of some kind. And there's a tunnel for the train. Uh, it looks so cool on the viewfinder. Mm -hmm. Looks cool from this point, too. It looks so neat going through that tunnel on the viewfinder. Oh, well, there's just raw rock. Washington State. And if you notice, it got smaller. It went all the way down to 10 feet. Wow. And I just made it. I don't know what that yeah, waterway was. Sometimes. Because Columbia's to the left. We've 
Eventually, we had driven 5,428 miles in seven no, weeks. I, I don't remember if this is a rumor or if this is really true, but I read somewhere, I think, that when they built that dam up there, that they altered the flow of the river. Um, I'm not sure if that's true or not, but we're going to go by the Bonneville um, power dam up here uh, in about 50 miles or so. Well, dams always alter the flow of the river to some. Yeah, and um, uh, I had came to there a few times before, but I think I was mistaken with that statement. I think it was the Cooley Dam that altered uh, the flow of the river. Um, if anybody knows, uh, give, me a, give me a call about that. But what, what's so interesting is you can just go a few miles and the scenery changes again. And through the whole trip, what we was trying to show you is how everything changes. Um, doesn't take very long, 20 miles sometimes. And you s looks like you're somewhere totally different, you know. And we go to Europe and we go to all these places. But America is such a beautiful country. And I hope we can preserve it the way it is for our... Um, children and our grandchildren. All right, we're going to give you a 360. So, so I guess we're Johnny. back on the road here. We got a 360. Travel oh, along I know where Oregon we are. Trail. Yeah. It's from the inside, of course. Fun stuff with Sean. The child and the man. That's the inside of the RV. And Miss. E.T., the kitty, of course, she's either in the back or up on top. She's really good about traveling with us. World War I Veterans Memorial on the washing side of the Columbia River. And we again accidentally ran into it and um, we spent the night and waited for the shop to open the door. Uh, it didn't say that we could park there, but we took the liberty of doing that and uh, visited with some people there and uh, it's only like five or six hours from here and it's a replica of the original Stonehenge in, in England and we eventually asked someone why uh, it wasn't made of sandstone like the original one is and we were told that the person paying the bills liked that color better and that was a good explanation, we thought. And um, somewhere along the line, there is a shot of uh, Mount Hood, actually. Maybe we missed it already. But you can actually see um, Mount Hood from there. Then it goes straight down on the other side of the river. So I'm assuming if you're driving on high uh, interstate 84 that it would be visible um, I would assume that and uh, now that we know it's there maybe we look for it again the next time they celebrate solstice and uh, uh, other festivals there we were told and um, it's just enormous and uh, like I said it's a war World War War World World War One. Gee, that was a big one. Memorial. It's just hiding there, overlooking the Columbia River. And uh, we were glad to spend some time there. To get back to the sign about the Japanese internment. 
Later on that year, I was on an airplane from Laughlin, Nevada to, to Portland, Oregon. And I mentioned that I had seen that sign. And as I sat down, I could not see the people next to me, and I didn't want to be rude and look around the corner. But as I mentioned the sign, um, the gentleman by the window started crying. And when I looked, he was a Japanese American, and he said that he was a survivor from that, from that camp there. And he was very pleased to know that they got a plaque. So that experience with that plaque in the middle of Idaho uh, had lingering effects on me, actually. And uh, I'm going to be quiet and let you enjoy Stonehenge here for a minute. Oh, and it did, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm going to keep talking. Because the, the Japanese gentleman, he was actually from Hood's River. And that's right, uh, right on the bottom of Stonehenge here. So, yeah, what a coincidence! There's no charge. And here is a close-up for you of the replica of Stonehenge. Um, on top of the Columbia River in Oregon on Highway 14. We're in Washington. Oh yeah, that's right, we are. Mary... Mary Hill, Washington. Mary Hill, Washington. It's the first monument to World War One veterans. It's pretty intense. We were here a very short time and a lot of people came. And so with that, we leave. Well, originally I was going to make that a closing shot, but then I changed my mind because we still got a long ways to go. And that was not the end of it. But as you can see, the weather has changed and everything. And then the road that you're coming up on here, it's a campground on the bottom there, and you have to go straight down. And I wasn't bold enough to do that, so I remained on top for that night. Yeah, so the, driving an RV, you have a lot of weight behind you, so. Get the wheels of the train. No sense to um, drive this road to be a hero. And you can tell these are these the most of these rocks are lava. He thought he was going to uh, climb that peak up there. I don't know how he's going to do that. Now he is Sean. But he does stuff like that. Our camera person. And a very responsible, knowledgeable yeah. young man. There he goes. It was so windy. I was so concerned about him. Because it could have blown him right off of there. But by now we were almost sick of each other, so he had to find something to, to do other than film and document. I don't know if he changed his mind or not. There he is. We were so far up, we actually drove to the clouds. Well, I guess we can give him some music. And... Uh, to go with that and 
the music was given to us from the, be good. from the Cheyenne, um, one of the Cheyenne um, people that yeah. produced that, and it was very pretty. Now there's Sean up on top, Just in time for him trying to get not to, to blow away right and fall into the river. Behind those bushes there, there's his head. I can't see him now. He come back around again. I didn't know if he had fallen off the cliff or not. So I thought, if I have to call someone, what do I tell them? Throughout the making of this tape, I would also like to give a special thanks to Linda Bissonnette for her beautiful singing. This tape is dedicated to my grandfather, Douglas Glenmore, whose Indian name is Black Bear. I hope you enjoy listening to this tape. Keep me in your prayers. I hope. This whole climb did not take very long. But sometimes when you do the same thing for a long time, it's okay to break it up a little bit and uh, do something different than drawing. It was a quick trip. We had to get home and uh, We would take every chance we could get to just do something for ourselves. That's really important. Because when you are on a journey, you really have, you're not supposed to have schedules. And the universe will take you where you need to be at whatever time it sees it fit to put you there. Now, if you notice, um, we are driving these are clouds on the highway there. These are actual clouds. 
We are driving through the clouds. That's how high we are. That was fascinating. Don't know how many feet that would have been, but it's just fascinating to drive through the clouds. We're on the west side of the Cascades about now. Yes, another one. Drive. Look at the red, white, and blue street markers. But Shugal. That's very, very irritating. Um. Confused and low end. I don't know what that was. Where the fuck is that? But is usually on my route. Well, tax the loss of work. What kind of Mm hmm. I actually talked to somebody because I thought it was kind of strange and the gentleman worked for some kind of highway department and he said that uh, that's really not a good idea because um, we're not supposed to be doing that. So, uh, But everybody wanted to be patriotic. Remember, uh, like I was telling you, we were in the middle of a, a war. We left in the 27th, no, left the 21st of April and came back on the 14th of June. So it was kind of a really, really quick trip here. Um, I think this is a good time to thank everybody for making this possible. I'd like to remind you, if we're going to do this again next year, to please give us a hand. Um, um, it doesn't take a lot of preparation, because I can leave at the drop of a hat. Um, but I just got real fortunate this time that I had a couple of camera people with me that that w didn't have a job at the time and you know had time to take off and because sometimes it, it we have to maneuver quite a bit to, to accommodate that we're starting a new season uh, next week. Um, yeah, this is the last of the Najoni shows. Now next week you'll see a piece. It, it is called Bang Bang You're Dead. And uh, I'm not going to tell you a lot about it, but I take great pride in airing that for you next week. And again, I have to thank uh, some of the friends for being able to make that possible, because you know where the stories are, so you have to call. And um, it, so we can go uh, do interviews or however that materializes. So never underestimate how important you are um, I'm just uh, the carrier here, the, um, the person that goes from point A to point B. Interstate Auto in, um, in Tomwater, they were wonderful. Every time we had a problem with the RV, or so it seemed, we called them and they talked us through everything. I mean, it's just so many wonderful people out there that uh, once they know what your intent is, they just there for you. And uh, I think I have another clip here somewhere. I'm not sure. Um, not the closing one. Yeah, it is. Uh, I need to check with my director. Do I have another clip or not? I, I have another clip. Let's get to that. Uh, and I just fell all over myself thanking everybody. And it doesn't matter. I'll thank you again at the end of the show. So let's go to the next clip. How cool. Jingle bell. Oh, yeah, these are the friends in Washington State. They were important, too. So you want to sing a uh, jambo? Stand up. OK. Stand up. It's a lucky day. <laughs> sing it loud. Loud, yeah, loud. <laughs> Jumbo, 
Papa Kweti, Hakuna Matata, India Kupendeza, Hakuna Matata, India Maja, Hakuna Matata, India Wajata Maja, Hakuna Matata, Waheli Wageni, Hakuna Matata. Thank you very much. And you know the strange thing? I know they're from. My sister spider has so many Yeah, the babies. little girls were this from here Kenya. This is um, sister spider, and I was drawing her, and I didn't know what to put on the inside. So I thought, gosh, a baby. It took me a month, and I finally came up with a baby. So this I drew is one a spider of our on natives. the inside, and that inspired me to write the story, why sister spider has so many babies. Do you want me to read you the story? Um, you could. Is it yeah, a I have. No, it's not a lot at oh, all. Oh, cool. Yeah, we'll do it. Why Sister Spider has so many babies? There was a sad, lonely sister spider who lived in a tall evergreen tree that overlooked the human village. She was very sad because she had no one to care for or love. Every day she would watch the human family that lived below the evergreen tree. There was a mother, a father, and a baby. They were a ha so happy playing and working together and caring for each other. The more Sister Spider watched the human family, the sadder she became. She longed for such happiness. One day, she decided that she did not want to be sad anymore. She asked herself, what makes that human family so happy? After a lot of thought, she decided that it must be their baby. The next day before the sun came out, Sister Spider crept from her web. She went down Lee. She gently picked the baby up and caressed him. She carried the baby off out of his home as quietly as she had entered and ran quickly to her home in the evergreen tree. Sister Spider was so excited and happy, she had someone to love, to care for, and keep her company. She had the human, she had the human baby for only a short time when once again she looked down at the human family, but this time when she looked down something was very different. The human family was sobbing. Where's my baby? The, fa the father was trying to comfort the mother, sorry, I missed the part. <laughs> there were streams of tears coming from their eyes. The human family was no longer happy. Sister Spider started crying as well. She was very upset that she was causing so much pain. In her haste to be happy, she didn't stop to consider the effects of her actions would have on the human family. She wanted the family to be happy again. After she got up enough courage, Sister Spider brought the baby back to his parents. She explained her situation to them and asked them for forgiveness. The family was so happy to have their baby back, they were very kind to Sister Spider. They granted her forgiveness and invited her to visit them any time. As Spider returned home, she felt more sad and lonely than ever before. She curled up in her lonely web and cried. Meanwhile, the human mother and father were talking. They felt sad that Sister Spider was so unhappy. They asked the creator of the earth for help. The creator thought over the situation. Spider is aware of her mistake. She had enough courage to bring the baby back to his parents. Once she realized her mistake, it was obvious that she really cared about how the family felt. Because of this, the creator decided that Spider should be rewarded for her honesty, courage, and caring. Sister Spider was rewarded with not just one baby, but with hundreds and hundreds. Sister Spider was happier than she had ever been in her entire life. Now she had her very own babies to love, care for, and to keep her company. Sister Spider was never sad or lonely again, and to this day, all spiders have hundreds and hundreds of babies to care for and love. <laughs> what a wonderful story, Why? Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This was kind of hard to read upside down, I would assume. Now we are at ocean shores. Now we're taking you to the open ocean here. And then the hotel back here, ever once in a while, I'm going to bring that in. The water will go all the way up to there. It sure will, the high tides. That's how far the water comes when we have high tides. And here's Nazona. Too far along a passenger at this time. There you go. can miss us. It's a warm day at the Pacific Ocean.
I'm going to go inside the Olympics and I'm going to show you the some Olympic of the wonderful mountains. things these people create in here. This is the window, the shadow. You see, it's me filming. Of course, it's 100 degrees everywhere else and it's cold here. <laughs> it was. And this is the outside of um, the Alpine furniture store. And they sell espresso, so come right along. So as you come in here immediately, you have uh, wind chimes. And it smells so good. The combination between the fresh wood and the uh, and the coffee, it just hits you in the face and you say, good morning. Now, as you know, it's 8.30 or 9, it's not even 9 o'clock. So for me to feel like that, yes. it must be good. Good coffee, good coffee. So I'm going to give you a walk around here. It's just incredible. Look at that bar stool here. And uh, we're going to talk to the young man here, and he's going to explain some of these things. Then we have arts and crafts on this table. And uh, now this caught my eye. A little bit here. Now, I like this one really well, but the one that sold my heart is this wall unit here. Oh my. There come a time we can put smells on. Look at this baby here. On video for you so you can experience what that smells like. Now isn't that incredible? It's for your television and big drawers and probably stay in your family for four or five generations. Like in the good old days. And I'll swing around here. And uh, this, of course, would be a bedroom. It, it's just incredible. I wish I could put the smell on here for you. Just wonderful. Radio KYA Here we have another bedroom. Nice and sturdy. Like in the frontier day. Here for hope chest. Now, all our girls get hope chests. Boy, if Destiny sees this one, ours that we just got here would look rather skimpy. Now, look at this. These are elk. Just incredible. Just incredible. I wouldn't mind sleeping in a bed like that. And of course you have boats. And dishes. So I guess other than the linen, you would really be set. And uh, I had one of those many years ago, a man sold it off the back of a truck. And it fell in the hole with the earthquake. With another table. The little end table. The price of wood has risen so tremendous. And a bar. With a chest set. Dining room. People go there to drink. And this, uh, I guess, would go in the hallway. Drink coffee, play oh, chess. For a porch. And they have internet access there. In Ocean Shores, Washington. Just awesome. Again, this is looking at the whole thing from the other way. And this is in Ocean Shores, uh, right off the main street, right after you get into town. And it's the first espresso sign that I saw for for the Washingtonians. Uh, you know, we can't do without our espresso, so it's an important place. So just come in uh, for some of the smells. Beautiful flower arrangements. 
We have all this honey here. And uh, I got one for my friend Anne. And then I realized I have other friends too. <laughs> it's made out of wildflowers. So we try and figure out how we're going to get the honey in a little jar. Well, smart young man is here. He said, well, just now we might have to uh, go to the dollar store, he says, and buy a container. Stop sometime because he got me coffee. No, yeah. lattes. Lattes or coffee. We have coffee, too. Coffee. Do you have <laughs> coffee? Cool. Yeah. Now, tell me your name again. My name is Bryson. Bryson. And yeah. uh, mention how you got that. Uh, yeah, my father's name is Brian. Uh -huh. And he was going to name me uh, Brian Jr. Uh -huh. But uh, instead, he, I'm Brian's son, so my name is Bryson. Cool, huh? Yeah, uh -huh. it's uh -huh. wonderful when parents are so inventive. Uh -huh. And it's your father that makes all these wonderful things? Yeah, he and I started the business mm -hmm. about uh, five and a half or six years ago mm -hmm. and uh, running it out of our basement. Uh -huh. And we, uh, we started up a retail store farther down here in Ocean Shores uh, about a year it, and a half ago. Is that, in the olden days, is that where all the bears were sitting outside? Um, carp bears, I used to see. Yeah, we had some carp town. bears out, out there. And uh -huh. he... Uh, our, our carver, who does it, is the international chainsaw champion carver. And what we like to do is, let's say it's a requirement for us, is that anything that we make of mm -hmm. all the furniture and things, that it's the highest quality. You have to speak up. It's, it's the highest quality mm -hmm. that we can, we can provide for our customers. Mm -hmm. Is it in Ocean Shores that they have the wood carving contest, or is that Westport? That's over in Westport. In Westport, uh -huh. yeah. That's a big thing in Washington State. I've seen it on TV. Yeah, it's um, it's uh, there's a lot of high-profile people. It's mm -hmm. it's a worldwide contest too. Mm -hmm. So there's people from Japan and China that are over there, mm -hmm. and people from Europe, and uh, the the guy that we have, he's won the contest uh, three times, oh and my. he's a five-time state champion carver for his bears and things. Mm -hmm. He does some really extravagant pieces. So mm -hmm. It's really neat. Going home in a very patriotic way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did. Uh, we got tired of driving, and um, and actually, we all were tired, including the RV. And so we just called a tow truck, and I said to him, uh, uh, "This is where I live. This is the volume. And wake me up when I get there." Oh, and my AAA card, of course. And so the last, uh, the last 61 miles, uh, he, he brought us in. Now I want to summarize some things for you here because we are now at the end of this journey here. In the meantime, in the meantime, uh, my webmaster has been working all summer long to put some of the shows on uh, the audio portion of the shows onto the websites. They are all interlocked. Uh, one is showing. TempleofHighStrangeness.org. The other one is ModernMystery.tv, and the one that you are familiar with, Psygeria.com. But they are all intermingled there, so you can go to the one that you like. It'll tell you how to get uh, the whole set of the travel shows if you go to Modern. It's www modernmysteries.tv and again you can access that from either one of the web pages and it'll explain to you how you can actually get copies of this whole series of shows we had called Nijona. Uh, the year is almost over and uh, so we have some other exciting interviews for you in store. Uh, Dr. Gilbert Jordan um, uh, one of the gentlemen that we went to see on the way. We still have not finished all the interviews that we we did on this trip. There were just so many people um, that came along, and uh, we just kind of gave you a sample of some of the things. We are working on a documentary called Who Put the Pearl in the Normal. Hopefully, that will be ready sometime next year. Uh, again, I so appreciate you helping um, with the show and all the things that you're doing, I have to thank my crew, um, Sean, Yonker, and um, Caitlin. Um, they went a long ways uh, with me 
took time out of their life, and uh, I, I guess they enjoyed it. And so that was one part. Now, then we come back here, then it has to be edited, it has to be put together. And then Bernie, uh, he creates these wonderful shots, like the one that you're looking at now. Now you tell me that's not beautiful, so thank you, Bernie. It takes a lot of people to pull all of that together. And um, so, what can I say? Just thank you. and. Um, Keep calling me and telling me what it is that you would like from me. And um, in our closing shot today, we're going to go to the Vainushi Valley. I want to show you something. And, uh, and that, again, leads into next week's show, which is called Bang Bang Your Dead. And um, I don't know how I am for time. Well, I have five minutes. I could have taken one or two phone calls. Um, Five minutes. The time of this taping, we are now in October. The predictions that we had made was talking about a lot of floods, a lot of water. As we speak, uh, a lot of the people in some of the places that we took you to are underwater. Some of the rivers have risen by 14 feet over a flood state. Um, 2003 was a horrendous year. Uh, 680 tornadoes, I believe it was. Out of that, we hit 14. Um, the flooding, the heat, it was just an unbelievable year, 2003. And uh, a lot of that has to do with Planet X. Um, that show is as accessible through the web page, the audio part of it. That would give you some kind of indication why the weather patterns have changed um, uh, like they have. And we just hope that all the people that suffered losses this year kind of have recovered a little bit. In Shoni Part 3, we took you to Pierce City um, and some of the other cities that is just not on the map anymore because uh, they got destroyed by tornadoes. And um, it's just been a horrendous year. Uh, no, no in-betweens. It went from one extreme to another. And I think that's going to continue. And uh, with your help, we're going to be right there and uh, see what's next on our journeys for next year. And so we're going to go back to our regular programming uh, just here in a, in a few days. And um, five minutes is a long time when you're on the air. But if you make a mistake, and just like a while ago, we have one little clip. Three seconds seem like they are in an eternity, which reminds me to point out to you again, we live in dual time frames right now. Uh, time is not no longer linear, and I think that is a fitting way to kind of conclude our journey. And uh, so stay in touch and uh, give yourself a hand for the last seven weeks of journeys in Najona, the RV. The copper is still on the road. Um, it needs some repairs, so if anybody can help um, to see what's wrong with our copper, the RV with the, the crop circles on it, feel free to call me. And again, you know, we send you love and light from our heart uh, to yours. And let me take you somewhere and share this last little clip with you and enjoy Nora Jones.